The sun has had an active few days, firing several powerful solar flares and plumes of searing hot solar material out into space. On Tuesday, May 13th, a sunspot on the sun's surface called AR4086 exploded, releasing a powerful X1.2 class solar flare. It was part of the most intense category of solar flares. Then in the early hours of Wednesday, May 14th, another sunspot named AR4087 became active and unleashed multiple flares. First, it released an M5.3 flare, followed by a very powerful X2.7 flare, and then an even bigger M7.7 flare just a few hours later. These solar flares released intense radiation that caused radio blackouts on the side of Earth facing the sun at the time. The blackout affected communication in regions including North and South America, Europe, Africa, the Middle East, and Southeast Asia. At the beginning of Solar Cycle 25, the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center, along with other experts, predicted that the solar maximum, the period of peak solar activity, would occur around July 2025 with monthly sunspot numbers ranging between 101.8 and 125.2. However, breaking all expectations Solar Cycle 25 has already surpassed those predictions, reaching a 13-month smooth sunspot value of 156.7 in August 2024. This surprising spike led many scientists to believe that the sun had already hit its peak in November 2024. But recent solar activity has once again surprised researchers. Now, some scientists believe the solar maximum might not have arrived yet, and instead, we could be heading toward even more intense activity. Experts are warning that massive solar storms could strike in the coming months. On the other hand, a new research has revealed something shocking about the recent strong solar events. Some scientists now suggest that this unexpected strength might be connected to a larger, lesser-known 100-year solar cycle. If this is true, we might be entering a period of even greater solar activity in the decades ahead. And if that happens, Earth could face stronger space weather events including dangerous solar flares and geomagnetic storms. So let's find out what exactly is this hidden 100-year solar cycle and why are scientists warning about major solar flares expected in 2025? Every 11 years or so, the sun's magnetic field completely flips, meaning the sun's north and south poles switch places. The solar cycle affects activity on the surface of the sun, such as the number of sunspots rises and falls. There are two main phases of the solar cycle, one is solar minimum and the other is solar maximum. One way to track the solar cycle is by counting the number of sunspots. The beginning of a solar cycle is a solar minimum, or when the sun has the least sunspots. Over time, solar activity and the number of sunspots increases. The middle of the solar cycle is the solar maximum, or when the sun has the most sunspots. As the cycle ends, it fades back to the solar minimum, and then a new cycle begins. Almost a century ago, Swiss astronomer Max Waldmeier left a trail of cosmic clues that scientists still follow today to predict when the sun will reach its solar maximum. Back in 1935, Waldmeier noticed something fascinating about sunspot cycles. The faster the rise of a sunspot cycle, the stronger its strength. He realized that a stronger cycle took less time to reach its maximum strength. This discovery, now known as the Waldmeier effect, is like a crystal ball for scientists helping them estimate the strength of a sunspot cycle by observing its early stages of development. And using this method, NASA scientists predicted that the next solar maximum will occur in the year 2025. But scientists have recently observed new data revealing that the sun is becoming more active than they originally expected, leading to growing concerns. Here you can see a graph which tracks the number of sunspots over the months. The black line represents the actual number of sunspots observed each month, gathered using telescopes and satellites. 
Around 2019 to 2020, we can see a sharp increase in sunspots indicating that the sun is growing more active as this cycle progresses. The purple line shows the smoothed sunspot numbers, which are averages taken over several months. This helps smooth out short-term fluctuations and gives a clearer view of the longer-term trends. The red line represents the predicted number of sunspots for solar cycle 25 based on past cycles. These predictions help scientists anticipate how active the sun will be over the next few years. Finally, the gray shaded area around the red line represents the uncertainty in these predictions. Because solar cycles can be unpredictable, and this shaded area reflects the possible range of sunspot activity from the highest to the lowest expected values. However, recent observations have shown that the number of sunspots is rising faster than expected, which is concerning. Scientists are becoming increasingly concerned because the sun is acting more violently than they expected. Solar activity is much higher than predicted, and experts aren't entirely sure why. To help solve this mystery, some scientists believe the current surge in solar activity might be connected to a lesser-known, long-term solar cycle that lasts around 100 years, and it may just be starting up again. Scientists believe that besides the sunspot cycle that occurs every 11 years, there are several other cycles that determine solar activity. For example, there's the Hale cycle, which lasts about 22 years and tracks how the sun's magnetic fields flip and shift. The Hale cycle plays an important role in shaping how sunspot cycles evolve. Looking even further back in history, records show the sun has gone through several long-term changes in activity. One of the most famous is the Maunder Minimum, which happened between 1645 and 1715 a period when the sun was unusually quiet and had very few sunspots. Another lesser-known but important pattern is called the Centennial Gleisberg Cycle, or CGC Cycle. This cycle affects how strong each sunspot cycle is and repeats roughly every 80 to 100 years. Although scientists don't fully understand how the CGC works, they think it might be related to small shifts in the sun's magnetic fields in each hemisphere, which could subtly influence the other solar cycles. A recent study published on March 2nd in the journal Space Weather suggests that this 100-year cycle might have just entered a new phase, possibly explaining why the current solar maximum is more intense and unpredictable than expected. In that study, Calvin Adams, an undergraduate researcher at GILA, proposes that we may have just passed the minimum of the CGC. If that's true, solar activity is likely to keep increasing for the next few decades, and the next peak of this long-term cycle might happen around solar cycle 28, roughly 40 to 50 years from now. This means that future solar activity especially during upcoming solar maximum periods, could be even more intense than what we're experiencing now. Scientists are warning that if solar storms become more violent, they could cause serious problems here on Earth and in space. Satellites are especially at risk. Intense solar activity can heat Earth's upper atmosphere, making it expand and drag satellites down from orbit. This has already happened to a few satellites in recent years and the risk may be even greater in the future, as companies launch huge satellite networks or mega-constellations that may not be designed to handle sudden increases in solar radiation. Also, strong solar storms can increase radiation levels at high altitudes, posing health risks to airline crews, frequent flyers, and especially astronauts aboard the ISS or future missions to the Moon or Mars. In short, the Sun may be entering a much more active phase, and we may only be seeing the beginning of it. If so, it's a sign that we need to better prepare for stronger space weather in the years and decades to come. That's the end of this video. If you found it interesting and informative, let us know your thoughts in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Also, if you'd like to support our work, you can do so by purchasing our t-shirts or donating via Super Thanks. Your support helps us create more amazing content. 
Thank you for watching.